You spoke really movingly after the end of the, you know, when, when the um, conviction was announced um, about your memories of, of Brianna. What, what um, when you look back now, what are the kind of memories that, that really kind of shine through for you? Just her cheeky attitude. She was really funny, you know. Even if she was naughty as a t toddler, young, you know, I could never <laughs> tell her off because she'd pull a funny face at me. And they're the memories they have. Just how she used to do funny little dances and that. And obviously going into her all the years, she was just a typical teenager, you know. Tried to put me in my place and she was, as you can see, she was beautiful. She was talented with her makeup. You know, she wanted to do hair and beauty, you know, after she finished school. Some of the things we spoke about leading up to, you know, that tragic event. And it's difficult because we were so close for more memories. You know, I've been deprived of so many more memories now I could have with her. And yeah, that's... Yeah, the, I mean, the trial was awful for everybody to listen to, but I imagine for you, for those who are close to Brianna, I can't imagine, no one can imagine what that must have been like. When you reflect on what happened to her almost a year ago now, isn't it? What do you, what do you feel about that? I st I'm still in shock. I still, to this day, it still doesn't feel real, you know. The impact it's had, not just on me, but my mum, my sisters, my dad. Um, it's just shocking. And I don't think I'll ever have closure from it. It's just every day I think about it, you know, the brutality of it, the the way she was befriended by this Scarlet and she was she had anxiety and all that anyway, you know, and to have that trust with someone who's meant to be a friend and she's took, you know, brave enough to go on that bus, like you hear how she sent a message to her mum. And the thought of her just on that bus, not realising what's going to happen, it's, it's just very difficult. I just, I don't think I could ever get it out of my head. And the things I heard in the, you know, at the trial, the messages between them both, I've just complete and utter horror. And I was going to ask that, I don't know, I don't know how any parent can answer this question, but what, those two people, those two kids, they were kids as well, what do you, what are your feelings about them now? I have no feelings, well, there's only anger towards them, I, if I'm honest, I hate them. Um, I, they're just evil, you know, I've got, what they've done and I don't think they'll ever change. I think they'll always be monsters and that's what they are to me. That's my feelings with them, they're just a pair of monsters. What do you think about the decision to name them? They're, they're going to be, their names are going to be known forever now. There was discussion about that. Do you, what do you think about that? Well, at first, you know, I thought, yeah, they, they should be named. Why should they be protected? You know, people should know who they are. And now I think now when they will be named, you know, they've, the name's always going to be connected, you know, tied with Brianna all the time. So. I just think they shouldn't be named. I think they should just be forgot about, locked up, and not even spoke about again, because they're nothing. I don't know if you can answer, say if you can't answer this, but there was a lot in the trial about the world they were in, particularly the Scarlet and what she was looking at, and it was pretty dark, wasn't it? The, Very the world, dark, yeah. The, the world they were in. Um, I mean, just, uh, you know, you know, dad of a teenager as well. I mean, that's it's pretty alarming. What what was heard about the world that kids get involved in was pretty alarming. Did you? What do you think about about? I do. But they, they seem to, no one seem to know about it as well. Yeah, that's the bit I don't understand. I don't know if there was. You know, I can't really comment on the parents. I know it's it's terrible for them as well, knowing what their children are. But how there's no red flags or anything. How they've not, you know. Social media and the phones and that maybe they, you know, 
kids nowadays, Snapchat and all that, maybe some parents just can't keep control of that, but if, I just don't know how there was no signs of, you know, especially from, for me, the the girl, she was disturbing even more than the, the other one. Some of the stuff she was saying in their messages, the website she was going on, it's just shocking. Uh, a 15 year old, 16 year old could, is like that and it's scared. But how there was no red flags with her, you know, I don't, I don't understand. We, um, <clears throat> we saw the days after what happened, the, the kind of outpouring, you know, not, not just here as well, around the country, in other countries as well, um, in, in tribute and in memory of, of Brianna. What was that, was that like? Obviously, we're going through the worst possible thing at the time, but did that help? What was that like? It did help because the support she had, the it was amazing, you know, to see all these vigils all across the country, and how people, you know, spoke about her and how, how beautiful she was, and it yeah, it was amazing to see, you know all them people showing the support towards the family and, you know, remembering, sorry, remembering Brianna, you know, friends, friends and fam, other family as well. Mm. She's just missed by, she's touched the hearts of, you know, loads of people and it was proven with them vigils. What, um, where's it left you now? I mean, you, you said about <clears throat> how difficult it's been and going back to work and stuff. What's, what do you think looking back now? What, what's the impact been on you? Well, obviously the memories I'll never have. You know, been deprived of many memories with Brianna now. And um, the impact's had on me is just, I'm sort of like in a, I don't know, words like a rut. You know, I'm just really struggling. You know, work's been brilliant with me. You know, giving me the time. But I, I'll never... You know, I'll move on, try and move on with my life as best I can. But I'll never stop thinking about Brianna. I know her. she'll live on in my dreams. And I just keep thinking about the days we could have had, you know, her birthday was coming up. Not so long after it, it's just, it's difficult. No, I can't really, I can't, like I said, I can't really put it into words, you know, how it's affected me. You said in your, <clears throat> just finally, you said in your statement, <clears throat> you think about, you wish you'd been there to protect her. Yeah. And which, which must be, that must be a hard thing to, to live with and that lives on, I guess. Yeah, it, it does. And that's all I keep thinking about, you know, what if we're up, you know, we were to speak on that day and she wanted a lift or something, or if she asked me to go with her, stuff like that, which, you know, I know was, has not happened. And that's all I keep thinking about her on her own in that park with them and what they've done. And I really wish I was there to protect her. And that's, just what I have in my head all the time. I can't get it out of my head, you know, what's happened to her.